Life Technologies presents The Other Half, a lesser-known story about how you can use your genetic analyzer for fragment analysis, too. Capillary electrophoresis genetic-based analyzers from applied biosystems are often called sequencers, mainly because they're most commonly used for Sanger sequencing, the most broadly utilized technique for sequencing a DNA fragment. But what you may not know is that your genetic analyzer can also be used to determine the size of that DNA fragment, making a multitude of fragment-based applications possible on the same system. Let me show you how it all works. In most fragment analysis applications, the unknown DNA fragment to be analyzed is PCR-generated using a fluorescent primer. The fluorescent PCR product is then mixed with a size standard, which is an assortment of DNA fragments of known sizes, labeled with a different fluorescent dye than the unknown fragment. The sample is then denatured using a thermal cycler. We recommend the Verity Thermal Cycler, then placed in the genetic analyzer for analysis. Once the mix of known and unknown DNA fragments is injected into the genetic analyzer, they get separated by size as they migrate through the capillary. Smaller fragments move faster. Larger fragments take a little longer. Each labeled fragment is detected by the system camera based on the dye used, and the fluorescent signal produced generates a peak. The peaks in the electropherogram are then analyzed using our gene mapper software. A sizing curve is then generated using the sizes of each known DNA fragment in the size standard and their respective migration times. And this curve is used to precisely determine the size of the unknown fragment. One really big advantage in using your genetic analyzer for fragment analysis is the ability to multiplex. When you want to analyze DNA fragments in different size ranges, those fragments can be labeled with the same dye, separated in the capillary, and detected individually with no problem. However, when fragment size ranges overlap totally or even partially, you could not identify which peak corresponded to which fragment. This is where fluorescent multiplexing comes in. With a genetic analyzer, multiple dyes can be detected at the same time, so you can use different dyes to label DNA fragments in similar size ranges. Being able to select a mix of fragment sizes and fluorescent labels allows a high level of multiplexing, letting you analyze multiple fragments in a single migration. Another advantage of using a genetic analyzer for fragment analysis is the sensitivity it can achieve. Not to mention you can work with any type of DNA template, even the difficult ones like blood spots or formal and fixed paraffin embedded samples. Unlike sequencing, most fragment analysis applications don't require complex sample preparation or cleanup before electrophoresis. And because the determination is size-based, data interpretation is pretty straightforward. You can run a diverse range of fragment analysis applications on a genetic analyzer, and you don't need prior knowledge of the DNA sequence either. You can also use peak intensity measurements for relative quantification applications. So. All you need is to add a drop of your own creativity to develop a custom fragment analysis application in no time. But before you do that, let me show you a few you might want to consider. The most common fragment analysis application is for microsatellites, which are repeats of two, three, four, or more bases. These repeat units vary between individuals, which allow you to genotype samples. DNA fragments containing microsatellites are amplified by PCR, and the size of the amplicon produced is directly linked to the number of repeats. A paternity test is a perfect real-world example of microsatellite analysis in action. The microsatellite profiles for parents and children are compared, and microsatellite alleles found in the child are inherited from both parents. Microsatellites are used for a multitude of other applications, too like animal typing, forensics, disease linkage analysis, and microsatellite instability due to mutation in DNA mismatch repair enzyme. MLPA, a technology commercialized by MRC Holland, can be used to determine which part of a gene has a different number of copies in a cancer sample. Two probes are designed for each part of the gene to be analyzed. Hybridization and ligation of the two probes generates a fragment, the measured signal intensity of that fragment is proportional to the number of copies in that portion of the gene. 
For this fragment analysis application, multiplexing is achieved by increasing the size of the probes, allowing more than 40 fragments to be analyzed in just a single injection. MLPA can also be used to determine the methylation level of CPG. Fragment analysis can also be used to analyze single nucleotide polymorphisms, or SNPs. Using our snapshot kit, a primer hybridizes the base just before the SNP. Then, a primer extension reaction is performed using four DDNTPs with different labels. The color of the fluorescent label detected on the fragment produced identifies which base was incorporated. Like MLPA, multiplexing is achieved by increasing the size of the probe. So in a single injection, up to 10 different SNPs can be analyzed. Fragment analysis also allows you to compare the complete genome of two different samples without needing to know the sequence for either. One example of how to do this would be the AFLP method. In this technique, a genome is cut with two different restriction enzymes and adapters are added at either extremity of the DNA fragments generated. This allows the fragments to be amplified using primers designed in the sequence of the adapters. Fragments are then analyzed on the genetic analyzer and peak profiles are compared. A difference in the DNA sequence can eliminate or create a restriction site which impacts the peak profile, so you can determine the level of variation between samples without having to identify the mutations. AFLP is typically used for plant and bacterial DNA, but can be used potentially for any genome. RFLP, MLVA, tilling, MSMSA, and back fingerprinting are other techniques that you can easily develop on a genetic analyzer. You can even create custom techniques to fit your specific laboratory needs. To learn more about all of the fragment analysis application possibilities that your genetic analyzer is capable of, visit www.lifetechnologies.com forward slash fragment analysis.